Good morning and welcome to the 26th of April 2022, also known for us as the arrival day of our Volkswagen EOP. Yes, that's right. It's been a long wait. It's been about three or four weeks, but it's been about a four year wait for a replacement for our family car, a 2010 Renault Scenic, a review that you can watch actually on the channel. It's the previous video. Actually, in the previous video, that's when I first hinted our new car and it's arriving today in this video. So this video is going to be a bit of an overview of the car arriving and just the overall first impressions, really. That's what it's going to be. So, yeah, we're very excited. I've got to show you this. Yesterday, we had our EV charger fitted. It's a wall box Pulsar Plus. I put some B-roll in. So you've got the main box here drilled into the wall, obviously, where all the electrics are. And you've got your wire, which is about five meters, I think. And this comes out the wall. And you've got your charger. That's perfect. So it'd be nice to have that and nice to charge our EOP properly. So don't know what's left to say, apart from the time now is 8 a.m. And we are the first delivery of the day. The driver's not too far away. We've been told he's going to arrive between about half eight in the morning and nine o'clock. So really not long to go. So remember to subscribe to the channel, follow me on social media at Daniel Carzo 5 and all that's left to say is that I'm Daniel Actaus and you are watching Daniel Drives. <laughs> So then, here it is, our new Volkswagen EOP, also known to us as Sparky. That's the name we've gone for, as voted by loads of people on Instagram and Twitter. Sparky the EOP, here it is, and it's looking amazing. It arrived literally 10 minutes, if that, after I filmed the intro with the charger, um, and the Panda was still here, and my dad was like, ah, panic, get the Panda off the drive, because this now lives on the drive to be charged and stuff like that. So uh, the delivery driver was lovely, great guy. Apparently he's, he's up at 3 a.m. every morning to deliver. And uh, he gave us a bit of a brief around the car, showing us what was what. And yeah, just checking around the car, checking if there's any damage. Thankfully, there wasn't. So let's, in a very unprofessional vloggy style, um, let's have a bit of a walk around, shall we? And just have a bit of a first impressions look into the design and just the car, really. So here we are then, here's Sparky, the Volkswagen E-Up. Um, so this is basically fully loaded. It's got everything on it, it is top spec. And that's not something we've done, it's something that the leasing company that we're using has done. All of their cars seem just, just to be top spec. So first of all, it's got the design pack or something, which gives you this blue strip by the VW badge, and that signifies it's electric. Also, the registration, nice reg, we knew about that a few weeks ago. Um, it's got the green strip, which also signifies it's electric. And I like that because the EOP is an EV that doesn't shout about being electric. When that green strip got introduced onto UK registrations for electric cars, I wasn't sure. But now I'm seeing them around, I do really like it. So another thing is it's got the daytime running lights um, underneath the uh, headlights, and that's specific to the e-Golf and EOP. And I like that, and you'll see that maybe with some B-roll later on. Uh, moving around, it's got the 15-inch Tesla wheels, alloy wheels and they're aerodynamic um, as opposed to other wheel designs you may get. So I'll increase your range. Goodyear tires all round. They're efficient grip compact tires, I believe. And they're really glossy and they won't be like that for, for long, trust me. Uh, making our way, we've got mirrors with indicators on, LED indicators, just like the Scenic over there, which will be going soon, it's quite sad. Um, so yeah, let's have a look around the back. And here's the back of our lovely new car. Looks really nice, doesn't it? A lot of people say that in white they look like a stormtrooper. Yes, they do. They also look like a fridge. A few people were saying we needed to call it like uh, Mila or something, like a Hoover. But uh, I really like the styling. I think the Op has a design, what, just over 10 years old now. It's fantastic. It hasn't aged one bit, really. It still looks quite fresh. Again, continuing, we've got the blue strip at the back, signifies electric. Lovely e Op badge. A lot of people on Twitter and Instagram have been doing Yorkshire jokes. They're not funny, okay? Please stop. Um, and I know there'll be a few people in the comments saying, hey, up Dan or something. So there we go. Just have to pretend I'm laughing. Um, it's got a reversing camera, which I'm excited about. Um, I'll show you that when we go inside. Rear parking sensors, obviously. It's just really nice. I like it. Let's go inside. So, stepping aboard the EOP, 
it's a lovely interior. Now, obviously, this is one of the cheapest cars in the VW range, not the E-Up, but the Up. So you'd expect the interior to be a bit cheap and nasty, but it really isn't. Yes, it's simple because it hasn't got the infotainment or anything, but I really like it. I do really like it. So let's hop aboard. Very professional camera work now, I know. And let's have a look at the, uh, the dials in front of us. So in the middle, we've got the speedometer, digital display. And if I close the door, that'll go away. Um, we've got the, the range here and it's an analog dial to show the range. How often do you get that? And this is sort of like your, the equivalent of RPM, basically. It shows you how much electricity you're using and how much electricity you're putting back into the battery. Nice steering wheel coated in leather. Um, you've got controls either side and you've got a nice horn which doesn't work because the ignition isn't on. Um, and in the middle, you've got your radio and your climate control. So let's get the nice key, put it in the ignition, because it's a, it's a standard key in an electric car. I love that. So novel. Ignition on, foot on the brake. Dun, dun. And let's turn the radio off, because I'll get done for copyright or something. Electrical system, vehicle can still be driven. Uh, yes, I think that's because my door's open. It's very uh, Volkswagen Audi group with all of the beeps and bongs. So there you go, 9.01 a.m. And the car's been here for quite a while. The car has done 10 miles, that is it. And it's telling me I've got a range of 160 miles. Now, because the car's still new, the battery needs to sort of wear in. We probably won't get that. In fact, we won't. And today it's only, uh, it doesn't tell me the temperature, does it? Let's have a look, can I flick through? How do I flick through? It's here that I flick through. Um, it's telling me range, yeah, Emax. Consumption, I'll be excited to see what that's like. Uh, travel time, 21 minutes. Yeah, I can't see the temperature on here. I did before, but the car has done 10 miles, that's it. So yeah, we've got the radio, DAB, um, we've got Zoe Ball on at the moment, um, and you've also got FM and usual stuff. No CD player, which is a shame. Uh, you've got your climate control, and um, that's all right. But the only problem is it defaults to 22 degrees, which I really don't get why. But it's okay, because it's got bum cookers. Yes, it's got heated seats. And I think that's great because on a car that doesn't have a heat pump, um, having the heaters on full blast, it's going to batter your efficiency. So having heated seats is a lot more efficient because it's putting the heat in the right places. And I did try it out before, sat in the car, and after two minutes, level two of heated seats was too hot. It's incredible. Really, really powerful. I like it. Another little thing is if I put it into reverse, obviously you've got park, reverse, neutral, drive, then you've got your B mode. If I put it into reverse, like so, there we go you've got your reversing camera, so I can see the back of the driveway, and you've got your parking sensors here. I wasn't sure if this car would come with that, and I'm glad it has done. So you've then got your neutral, obviously, and then you've got drive. Now you're in drive, what you can do is you can put the lever side to side, and what that's doing is it's changing your recuperation level, your regen braking. So you've got one, you've got two, and you've got three. And then you've got four, but to go into four, you have to put the lever back one, like a sports car. It's the same as in my uh, my friend Matthew's Golf GTI. I think you put it back in to go in sport mode or something, but this is B mode, quite a bit more sensible. Um, so there we go. Nice to have recuperation in a car um, of this price point. Put it back into park. Um, you've got Eco, you've got Eco Plus. Um, so that's nice, 12 volt charger, USB socket on top. Um, you've got a vent there, a vent there. It's, a, it's overall really nice in here, I like it. Stepping into the back. Now, this is something we were concerned about because obviously we've come from a Renault Scenic, big car. And I'm six foot two, my dad's just under six foot five. We're a tall family. So getting an up as a family car, a lot of people were saying, you're idiots, why are you doing it? But we were just telling the delivery driver that we looked at a Renault Kadjar a few years ago and we couldn't fit in the back of the Kadjar. However, we can fit in the back of an op. Because if you follow me on social media, you'll remember that a while ago we went to VW to sit inside of a um, up GTI, let me just turn the camera around. We sat inside the up GTI because VW didn't have an E-up, so we just thought we'll sit in a GTI to get an idea for the space, and we fit. So I'm six foot two, and I've got some room on top, not a lot, granted, but I've still got room, and the driver's seat is in my mum's position, and I can fit behind just fine. And I'm a tall person, so that's pretty good praise. Um, one thing that's maybe not so good, the only thing that puts me off the car, is the rear windows, because they don't go down, uh, they're pop-out windows just like the olden days, just like that. So there we go. Um, this video wasn't meant to be a review, it's just meant to be a first impression. So there will be a more professional video filmed in the not too distant future, but this is just a, uh, a bit of a first impressions quick walk around. Let's go to the boot. Close the door. 
nice little electronic boot. There you go, making a nice noise. And there's your boot. It's an all right size, isn't it? It's not too bad. Very deep, because obviously there's no fuel tank. Um, we've got our Type 2 connector here um, for when you're charging publicly. And then down here in the little charging gobbing thing, you've got your three pin plug. Um, and I believe that's an optional extra that's been put on as well. Um, so that's nice to have just in case, for example, we go away to a friend's house who don't have a charger fitted, which is perfectly fine, and we can use the three pin socket. So yeah, that's not too bad. Happy with that. Let's have a look at the engine, or rather lack of. So let's try and find the uh, bonnet release. Um, I've never done this on this car. I think it might be here. It is here. And there we go. There is the motor underneath and the, the battery's on top, obviously. Well, the batteries are actually in the floor. Um, I have got a diagram I'll put on screen now, which shows you where the batteries are in the car and the motor. So uh, yeah, there's the actual battery for stuff like your radio and stuff like that, I believe. I think it's the inverter on top. Um, nice little package, actually. And if the wires are orange, they're lethal, so don't, uh, don't mess with them. So there we go, there's a quick walk around of our brand new 2022 Volkswagen EOP, also known as Sparky. Very excited to have it. It's been uh, not a very long wait, as I mentioned at the start, but it just it's felt like it. It really has felt like it, and I've been wishing away the days, which is something you should never do. So there's a quick walk around. There will be a more detailed review coming soon on the channel, hopefully. Um, but obviously GCSEs and stuff are making everything a bit more busy than usual. Um, but this isn't the end of the video because we'll be going out for a drive and I'll do another piece to camera because uh, I'm like that, very kind, and I think that's worthy of a subscribe. So, um, yeah, see you in a bit when we're out on the road, our first drive in our EOP, and my third time in an EV. Obviously, first time being BMW i3 and second time being the tiny Citroen Ami. So it's a bit later on in the day, I've unplugged the mic, so I'm just using the mic and my phone, so apologies for the difference in sound. Just been to see my granddad, um, who's 50-50 on EVs, he had a go and he absolutely loves it. Um, one of the questions he asked was, can you go on motorways with it? Um, that's the type of questions he'd ask. Um, but yeah, EOP, really, really nice on the road, really pleasant, power from roundabouts is immense. So there we are then, a quick first impressions look, only a short video of our new Volkswagen EOP. 2022 first brand new car we've had and it's really exciting and we've done probably 35 miles or so and we've just plugged the car in as you can see not because it needs it but just because it's a bit of a novelty um it won't become a habit we haven't got range anxiety or anything but it's just to see if it works and it does so happy days we've got a good car and a good charger there will be a lot more eop content coming to the channel soon so make sure you're subscribed for that there'll be a full review there's even a bit of a road trip which is happening the following Sunday after this video. So there'll be more details about that coming very soon. Um, let's just say it's going to a show. Yes, that's all I'll say for now. Um, so in the meantime, remember to subscribe to the channel, follow me on social media at DanielCars05, and me and the up will see you very soon. Goodbye.